flag? G.I. Joe's aircraft carrier? Yep. Wow. Hey guys, hello gorgeous. I've been wanting to review this one for quite some time, but seeing as how this is going to be my biggest swag review ever, I knew I'd have to wait until the new year and put some serious vacation time into this review. So here it is, the crown jewel of my collection, the holy grail, as well as the holy something else, the G.I. Joe Ultimate USS Flag Aircraft Carrier. I wish I could have done this review on a blank background like my other swag reviews, but this thing is just too big to fit through the door of my toy museum. And it seems as though every time I disassemble it and reassemble it, one of the connecting pieces either gets a stress mark or breaks. So in the toy room, this review shall be. The USS Flag is the largest G.I. Joe vehicle slash playset ever created. It was named in honor of the man who created the G.I. Joe team in the comics, General Flag. For those who have never seen a USS flag in person, I cannot convey the humongousness of this thing. It is seven feet long and three and a half feet wide. Now you may notice something a little different about this particular USS flag. After having it on display for a couple years, I decided that it was a little too short for how long it was, and I also didn't like how immobile it was. Once the struts are put down and the flag is put on top of it, that is where it's going to stay and any attempt to move it, or any accidental bump, is just going to break pieces. I got the idea for the second level of this flag from G.I. Joe Berg on YouTube. You definitely want to check out his USS flag review on YouTube when you're done with this one. I'll get into the particulars of the customized areas of this flag later on in the review, but to start, I'm going to cover what was included with the original Hasbro release. The USS flag tops many people's lists of greatest playsets of the 80s, or of all time. I prefer to think of it more as an environment than a playset though. It does have a few gimmicks that you can play with, but it serves more as a display table for your other G.I. Joe vehicles than a playset. It's made up of the deck, which can hold several vehicles. And some of these vehicles are huge themselves. The Phantom itself is huge. The Sky Striker is a big ship. The Tomahawk takes up a lot of space. And all of these fit very comfortably, along with a bunch of other vehicles on the flag. The deck on the flag is so big that you can easily fit multiples of the same vehicle. You can have several conquests, a couple tomahawks. You can put a bunch of sky strikers on this thing. Even on a little side area like the elevator, you can easily fit three skyhawks. And I think that's what's really cool about the flag, being able to easily display multiples of the same vehicle. Connected to the huge long deck is the three-tier superstructure, which features interior and exterior display options. The outside part has two balconies, perfect for displaying higher ranking Joes, like this custom General Larry Hama figure, the man who breathed life back into G.I. Joe. The lower balcony features a ladder, which will take you up to the higher balcony, where you can put the real big wigs of G.I. Joe. In the G.I. Joe Real American Hero cartoon, the flag was actually sunk in the episode Computer Complications, but was recovered a few episodes later in Raise the Flag. Here's another little customization I've done to my flag. I've put in some windows, as well as a touch light. That's the outside of the superstructure. Now let's take a look inside. Here's the bridge, featuring the Admiral's chair, and a bunch of computer consoles. Admiral, bogey's at two o'clock. How long before they're on us? Less than a minute, sir. And the steering wheel. You can see these Joes are living dangerously by letting shipwrecks steer. With a little seafaring luck, we'll have a very boring voyage. There's plenty of extra space all throughout the superstructure for little additions like tables or this wind-up satellite. Below the bridge is a computer room or communications room with a ladder that connects the two. Beside that computer room is a weapons or missile storage room. And there's a little bit of extra space for something like this missile or another rack. Beside that is just an empty room with a door that leads out to the deck and a ladder that'll take you up to 
another little empty room, which I've placed a bunk in for some Joes to crash. Beside that is another computer room, or communications room, which has plenty of room for a table and more electronic gadgets. There's a ladder that'll take you up to the mast. And this is what gives the flag its height. The mast is made up of several antenna pieces that fit together, and also on the back is the net radar. The tower is often overlooked because it's all about putting the vehicles on the deck. And the interior might not even be seen if you have your flag against a wall, but it has many cool diorama options. Alright, let's talk about the custom lower level. I'll walk you through step by step how I created mine. First I started out with a giant piece of particle board, one that was even longer and wider than the assembled deck of the USS flag. I placed the deck pieces on top and I drew out the shape that I'd be cutting. I didn't go for an exact match of the deck, because the struts under the deck actually go in a bit in some places. Next step was to paint the base. I took one of the strut pieces into Home Depot here in Canada, and they were able to do an exact match of the grey plastic with their computer. And since this lady was meant to sail, I also screwed in five wheels underneath. Two in the front, two in the back, and one in the middle for support. Then I bought some 2x4s and I cut them to match the strut supports from the flag as well as adding a window and some doorways. The doorways were definitely the trickiest part of the cutting. Kids definitely get a parent's help with the jigsaw. You're also probably going to want to thoroughly label these wood blocks, because they can get turned backwards and upside down very easily. Next step was to paint all the wood blocks and then reassemble them back in the proper order. You can nail or screw yours together for extra support, but my ultimate flag is pretty sturdy without it. After you have all the blocks set up, then you add the struts, the deck, and the superstructure, which gives you an ultimate two-level USS flag. It gives your flag what I think is some much-needed height, as well as tons of extra space for more G.I. Joe vehicles and figures. One of the toughest things about being an adult toy collector is finding space to put all this stuff. It wasn't really a problem when we were kids, because most of us couldn't afford to have a lot of this stuff. It's great that you can store all of your aircraft on the deck of the flag, but the Joes have a lot of naval vehicles too, so having an underneath level is a great place to store a lot of the vehicles like the whale and the shark. So those are the bare bones pictures, now let's take a look at it all done up. Here's one of the first hangars, which holds a convention exclusive G.I. Joe Tiger Ray, a repaint of the Cobra Hydrofoil along with Sergeant Slaughter's amphibious Warthog personnel carrier, and Stalker on a Manta. The Hydrofoil and Warthog are big vehicles, and they fit in this hangar very comfortably. Now I'm not very good at customizing, especially when it comes to lights, but one thing the lower level absolutely needs is lights. The deck has no holes in it and lets absolutely no light through. So unless you install some lights, it's going to be very dark under there. And no matter what you put under there, you're not going to see it very well. I just picked up a bunch of strip lights from Ikea and taped them up there. I don't lay on the ground and stare up at the underside of my flag, so this MacGyver style installation doesn't really bother me. Up next is the crew quarters. In addition to storing several vehicles, I wanted one of the rooms to store several figures. This is another big empty space that can hold a lot of stuff. Lockers, tables, chairs, and bunks courtesy of Marauder Gunrunners, your number one source for Joe Scale custom weapons and accessories. And the crew quarters leads directly into the Whale Hangar. The Killer Whale is a ginormous vehicle itself, and it easily fits underneath the flag. It's pretty tall too, but there's plenty of clearance. with space left over for two sharks, as well as two devilfish boats. The whale is a really awkward vehicle to display, but this is my absolute favorite. Looks great with a light right above it.
and with this layout, you can fit smaller vehicles in this back section, like devilfish boats, sharks, or mantas. Connecting to that hangar is a motor pool. Not all the vehicles on the flag have to be aircraft, boats, or submarines. It could be transporting vehicles to G.I. Joe headquarters. This is a support block for the tower, but I decided to cut a window into it to be able to see inside. With the layout that I decided to go with, it's not a room that you can easily look into, but there is ample space in there. Enough for two off strikers, a vamp too, as well as a silver mirage. Here you can see the connecting corridor to the whale hangar. And there's the doorway to the crew quarters as well as another doorway into another communications room. This is an extra computer console from a G.I. Joe headquarters. There aren't many vehicles that you can fit into this little space underneath the deck elevator, so I decided to just make it another computer room. And that room connects back to the first hangar. And here's a cool feature with the lights that I installed. They change colors. You can go into sonar mode or James Cameron Blue Abyss Tint or if Cobra attacks Condition Red! Red Alert! Red Alert! All hands on deck! All hands on deck! Somebody wake up shipwreck! And here's the front. There's space for a couple figures here, but unless they're Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, I find they look awkward standing at the bow of this ship. It's much easier to see the anchors now with the lower level, and they have further to hang. In addition to being a giant display table for your other G.I. Joe vehicles and figures, the USS Flag has some play features too. This girl has some serious firepower. <laughs> They're in for one heck of a shock! On top of the tower, there is a swiveling six missile launcher. It pivots up and down, spins a full 360, and the missiles are even longer than a G.I. Joe. Flags equipped with three gun turrets, which move up and down, and the barrel goes in and out. The radar net on the back of the tower spins, but it is very, very loose. Just gently touching it is enough to make it pop out. If you want to spin the net, you're going to have to hold it in place.
The superstructure has two working doors that open and close. I like that they don't snap into place. One less thing to break. And there's also the Admiral's boat, which you can deploy. It's an oddly shaped boat. Joes don't really sit in there properly, but it looks nice. And the deck elevator. This part is supposed to go up and down, but the strut supports are much thinner than the rest of the struts underneath the flag. I've stressed and cracked the supports underneath from even gently trying to move this elevator up and down. It's very finicky, so I'm not going to push my luck here. I prefer having it up anyway and just using it as more deck space for things like Skyhawks. There's a couple of satellite dishes, so the G.I. Joes can watch their stories on TV. It goes up and down and left and right. And there's a crane hook, which you can attach vehicles or divers. I'm on! They'll hoist us aboard! It comes with a crank so you can raise and lower the hook, and it also turns left and right. One of the pegs in mine is busted though, so it comes out very easily. And the rear satellite dish. This aft section is kind of weird. It looks like a Joe should be able to fit in there, but it's much too short. You could fit one in there if he was sitting. There's also a blast shield on the deck. You just lift this part here and it holds in place. Taking Joe's from jet blasts as aircraft take off. And this is one of my favorite features of the USS Flag. The most common vehicle that people would use for this aircraft carrier is the G.I. Joe Sky Striker, right? So they included this hook, which can be clipped into the back of a Sky Striker and the hook catches this cable as the Sky Striker lands. The Sky Striker came out in 1983, and I think it's pretty cool that they designed that back section to work with a vehicle that would come out two years later. And this, I'm sure, is a lot of people's favorite part of the USS flag, the microphone and speaker. The speaker attaches to the flag with this peg, and the microphone has several settings on it. There's three different sirens. There's this get the hell out of the way sounding siren. This one sounds like a red alert. And this one sounds like, watch out, this flag is backing up. And the fourth setting is an actual microphone. Tension our hands, tension our hands. Somebody please tell Shipwreck not to sleep in Deep Six's shark. Thank you. Shipwreck, did you hear Flint's question? It gives your voice a cool CB radio sound effect. Also included with the flag is a vehicle, a refueling tank and towing vehicle. The gas tank comes with two hoses and nozzles to refuel your G.I. Joe aircraft. And the towing vehicle includes this incredibly easy to lose engine cover. The towing vehicle can also be used to tow a Sky Striker. And finally, last but certainly not least, is the figure included with the USS flag. Admiral Everett P. Colby. Codename, Keelhall. Here's the bio from Keelhall's file card. Graduated Annapolis and Navy Flight School. Flew Phantom F-4s off the Intrepid in the late 60s. Attended the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island and the Armed Forces Staff College. Holder of the Navy Cross, DFC, and Air Medal, Keelhall is a respected military historian, a nationally rated chess player, and possibly the world's worst clarinet player. And these file cards always featured a quote from another Joe about that Joe. This one reads, Keel Hall was always cool. He could set an F4 down on a carrier deck at night with half his instruments out and walk away whistling. You know what it's like to land a carrier at night? 
Try jumping on a moving skateboard while blindfolded. It's one of the things I really loved about G.I. Joe growing up. The file cards always had a real-world military feel to them, as well as a quirky sense of humor. There were two versions of Keel Hall, one with a silver patch on his right shoulder and one without, and he comes with a very easily lost silver gun. If you prefer the modern look of G.I. Joe, the Joe Collectors Club released a Keel Hall, which came with this cool USS flag flag. Strangely enough, Keel Hall never appeared on the G.I. Joe Sunbow animated series. Instead, the commander of the flag on the cartoon was Admiral Ledger, an old, gray, portly, bearded dude with a wicked voice. I've been at sea so long, whales ask me for directions! The deck itself is a really nice texture. Since it gets a lot of vehicles run over top of it, I'm glad they decided not to go with a smooth surface. The deck is separated into four pieces. The middle part of the deck attaches to the front and back parts using these deck clips. These are very easy to break when removing or putting back in. And another easily lost piece, the two Y pins for the superstructure. These were literally the last two pieces I got to complete my USS flag. The flag also came with this barrier, which connects to the struts underneath the deck. But this piece isn't necessary with the custom under level that I've made. All it's going to do is block the view. Alright, time for a few comparisons. Here's the ultimate USS flag beside one of the other biggest G.I. Joe playsets, the Cobra Terror Drone. The pterodrome is about a quarter the size. And here's the huge G.I. Joe Mobile Command Center. Looking minuscule next to the USS flag. You can literally fit several of these mobile command centers onto the deck. And here's my favorite G.I. Joe playset accessory for the flag. The G.I. Joe Tactical Battle Platform. I think these two sea-based playsets look really nice together. Abandon ship! Abandon ship! Swim for the battle platform! And the custom lower level seems to make them more in scale with each other. Without it, the deck of the flag would be the same level as the battle platform. And for you Transformers fans out there, here is the largest G1 Transformer ever made, Fortress Maximus, on top of the USS flag. This transformer is colossal, but he takes up very little space on the flag. He's really heavy too, but this USS flag is super sturdy. And the flag is actually technically taller thanks to the mast. And the final scale comparison to give you an idea of the size, a human being. No, it's not Vanna White, it's my beautiful wife Luana. So it wouldn't be a 360 swag review without a 360. And since this thing is a little too big to go on a turntable, we're gonna actually give it a spin, so wish us luck. This thing weighs a ton! One, two, three, four, ah, thank you very much! Big round of applause for my wife for the help. Hope you enjoyed the ultimate USS flag review. Yo, Joe.
question or comment about the ultimate USS flag, scroll down and go to town. And to join the tribe, hit subscribe. Yo, Joe!